Good morning everyone. Today we are going to see about performing design of experiments using factorial method in Minitab. Whenever you are going to optimize a newly developed process, so we are going to use or we are going to perform the design of experiments and we can use multiple softwares for it and we got Minitab today. And before going into the topic, so we need to understand certain terms well. So the first thing is factors. So I'll try to mention the uh, the terms here. The first one is factors. And the second one is levels. And the third one is response. The fourth one is noise factors. And then the next one is treatment. And then we got run, then blocks, and then center points, and then experimental error, and then replicates. So these are the basic terms which need to be understood before going into the topic. So the first one is the factors. So factors are nothing but the parameters which are going to have certain impact on the outcome of a process, whether it can be yield or it can be the quality. So these factors are going to have an influence on the critical quality attributes or the yields. And the next one is, uh, or we'll take certain examples for these factors. So the examples can be like the pressure, the temperature, or the volumes of a solvent, or it can be the reagent molecules or it can be the assay of a reactant so these all can be taken as a factors and the next one is the levels so levels is going to be the range of these factors like let's say you got a solvent and for this solvent so you can have certain range like you can you want to study between one volume to ten volumes so the one volume is going to be the low level and ten volumes is going to be the high level and if let's say you got a temperature and if you want to study the impact of temperature during optimization and if you want to study within a range of 10 degrees to 100 degrees so 10 is going to be the lower level and 100 is going to be the upper level and the next one is the response so response is something where you are going to get the output like what is the output when you are going to take different type of combinations of these factors and levels like let's say you got two factors and two levels so this is the factor 1 and this is the factor 2 and here you got low and high so for factor 1 low is 1 and for factor 2 low is 2 and for high it is let's say 5 and let's say this is 10 and if you want to study between different type of combinations of factors and levels so you will be getting certain output so the output is nothing but a response that is let's say uh, for factor 1 low level and for factor 2 high level that is 1 and 10 if you want to study this combination you will be getting one response and similarly for high of factor 1 and low of factor 2 you will be getting some other response so it is a response tool so it's nothing but response and the next one is the noise factor so noise factors are something like a type of factors which are uncontrollable. So these are going to create some variability under normal operating conditions. Like let's say you got atmospherical conditions. You cannot control it until or unless it's going to be a clean room product. So let's say you are going to operate it in a intermediate area and you got no controls for the environment. So this is going to be a noise factor. Why? Because most of the times the environment is not going to play a role and if it is going to play a role so it is going to create some variability within the process and you cannot identify or control it so it's a noise factor and the next one is the treatment so treatment is going to be a specific combination of factor levels whose effect is to be compared with the other treatments like the different type of experimental runs you are going to take that means low level of factor 1 and low level of factor 2 it's a treatment low level of factor 1 and high level of factor 2 it's a treatment and high level of factor 1 and low level of factor 2 it's a treatment 
and high level of factor 1 and high level of factor 2 this is going to be another treatment so you will be getting total four types of treatments and similarly the next one is run so run means it's going to be a combination of settings of several factors in a given experimental trial okay and the next one is blocks so whenever you are going to control the noise factors so you should include certain blocks so this is going to be an arrangement of experimental unit in groups that are similar to one another and the next one is the center points so this is another type of experimental run where you are going to take the half values of high and low levels like let's say if you are including a center point in the experimental design so what's going to happen is so here you got a high level i mean low level of factor one is one and high level is five so automatically the center value is going to be around three so let's mention it as or else we can include it here center point so the center point for factorial one is going to be three it's going to be the half value of high and low and similarly for factor two it is going to be six so it's nothing but a center point and experimental error the next one so experimental error means it's a difference between the measured value and the true value so usually whenever you are going to take different type of experiments or different type of treatments so you will be getting some amount of response but this um, this particular response like let's say this is uh, the response that is derived and the next thing is this is the response ideal so the difference between the absurd response and the ideal response is nothing but a experimental error so it can be due to the chemist who is going to perform the experiment or the analyst who is going to analyze the response okay and finally the replicates so these are going to be the multiple experimental runs with the same factor settings that is levels and to understand this better like let's say here i got total two factors and two levels and the first run is going to be like the run one is going to be factor one low factor one low plus factor two low and the second run this is going to be factor one low plus factor two high and the third run is going to be factor 2 high plus factor sorry this is factor 1 high plus factor 2 low and the last run is factor 1 high plus factor to high and these are going to be the possible runs and if you want to replicate the same experiment like the run one and let's say instead of uh, having this I mean instead of having this run 4 here so you can replicate the same experiment that is run 1 so this is going to be the run 1 replicate and you are going to use the same settings so you are going to use the same settings and the same levels here and you are going to replicate the same experimental run one here so this is going to be a replicate so this is how you are going to replicate the experimental runs so these are the basic things which we have to understand before going into the cal i mean uh, the experimental part and let's jump into this mini tab how to do this particular thing in mini tab and before that i want to define the case study now so i want to optimize a reaction part 
so i want to optimize the reaction part where you are going to use solvent and a ksm so ksm is going to be having or it is going to having a limiting molecule and so i am not going to optimize the ksm and the next one is the reagent plus i am going to use a base and then i want to use or i want to operate the same reaction at a different temperature so this is my reaction part that i am going to perform a reaction using the solvent and a reagent and a base and a temperature so here coming to this part so i want to consider certain factors so the factors here are going to be so one is the solvent like the solvent volumes why because it is going to play a role in the reaction part why because if the reaction mass is having low viscosity automatically the reaction can propagate better so i want to understand what is the optimum solvent volumes and the next one is the reagent equivalence like what is the mole equivalence of the reagent that i have to use for getting a desired conversion level and the next one is the base equivalence similarly in order to in order to perform the reaction well so what is the mole equivalence of base or catalyst so you can consider this base as a catalyst also and the final one is the temperature at what temperature the reaction is going to propagate so this is these are the factors and for these factors i am going to have levels like the low and high so for instance i am going to consider the volumes as 4 low and high is 8 and similarly the equivalents so here i am going to take one equivalent that is in line to the ksm and the next one is approx 1.3 and the next one is i want to consider the optimization of a base equivalence so i'll be taking 0.2 equivalence here as low and 0.5 equivalence as high and then the temperature so i'll be taking it as 45 degrees as minimum and 75 degrees as maximum so these are the levels that i have considered and now using this same i'm going to perform the design of experiments so for that open the mini tab and then get into stat so just check here get into stat and then the doe the design of experiments and then get into factorial so create a factorial design so in this you will be getting multiple options so the first one is two level factorial then it is with default generators and the second thing is going to be two level factorial with specific generators and the third one is two level spit plot and the fourth one is plaquette permeant design and the fifth one is general full factorial design so you can select these at different conditions so i'll be selecting this two level factorial but the thing is here i got total four factors and two levels okay so i'll select the factors as four and in case if you have different factors so uh, let's get back to excel so in this for solvent volume i got two levels for reagent uh, and the remaining two also i got only two levels and if you got multiple levels if you want to study multiple levels for uh, these factors like for say for example the solvent volume so you want to study only two for reagent equivalence you want to study four for base equivalence you want to study five for temperature you want to study three then you get into the general fa full factorial design so in this case i got only two factors sorry four factors and two levels each so i'll be getting into two level factorial and then click this display available design and before that so you want to understand what are the number of combinations theoretically possible so the number of combinations are going to be or the number of experimental runs we can say this is going to be levels to the power factors levels to the power factors so here the levels are 2 and the factors are going to be 4 so it is going to be 2 power 4 so if you want to perform full factorial then you need to perform total 16 number of experiments and if you want to reduce the time in that case what you can do is you can reduce the amount of experiments so it is nothing but 2 power 
4 minus 1. So that means it's a resolution where you are going to reduce the number of experiments. So next set is going to be 8. And if you want to still further reduce the experiments, it is going to be 2 power 4 minus 2. That is going to be only 4 experiments. Okay. So that means you can say this is half factorial and this is full factorial so this is quarter factorial So the same thing you can check in this mini tab also after clicking this display available design so you are going to get see this so now what's going to happen is so the number of factors are on x-axis and the number of runs are on the y-axis so let's select the number of factors as four so in this if you are able to see so this is shown the like uh, the runs eight are going to be shown in yellow color with roman letter four that means it's a resolution four where you are going to reduce the experimental runs so this is going to be the half factorial and this is going to be the full factorial which is shown in green so this is only for information purpose so we have nothing to do with it click on ok and click on this designs in this designs you can see this is full factorial 16 it's nothing but 2 power 4 that is level to the power factorial uh, factors and this is half fraction that means where you are going to reduce some interactions okay and i want to perform full factorial and number of center points per block so i have taken high and low levels here and if you want to study the middle part that means the average of 4 and 8 is 12 so 12 by 6 it's uh, sorry 12 by 2 it's 6 so if you want to study at 6 and also coming to reagent equivalence so this is 1 and 1.3 and if you want to study here that is 2.3 divided by 2 it is 1.15 and coming to this base equivalence it is 0.2 and 0.5 this is going to be 0.35 the center value and this is 45 and 75 the center value is going to be 60 and if you want to study this combination so you can select the number of center points per block and coming to this number of replicates per corner points I don't want to replicate any experiment so i'll be selecting only one and the number of blocks so here in this case i have selected only the assignable factors assignable in the sense as per the theoretical knowledge only these things are going to like as per the theoretical knowledge only these factors are going to have an impact on our outcome so i'll be selecting these things only so in that case i'll be not selecting any blocks but if you want to study the humidity like the environmental conditions uh, and the relative humidity and as any other things which are not a part of process then you can select the number of blocks and if you are going to select number of blocks what will happen is the uncontrollable factors or the noise factors which are available in the selected list can be idealized so they will be segregated and their variability don't have any outcome on the process of this particular optimization so here in this case I have taken only the assignable factors so I will be selecting the number of blocks as one and now click on ok and here comes the factors so first of all it is the solvent volume just type here and the next one is the reagent equivalence and the next one is the base equivalence and the next one is the temperature and the low level is going to be 4 as discussed and the high level is 8 and coming to reagent equivalence this is 1 and this is 1.3 and this is sorry the reagent equivalence and coming to the base equivalence here I am going to take 0.2 why because this is only a catalytic, catalytic quantity and this is 0.5 and finally the temperature it's 45 and 75 okay now click on ok and just click on OK so that mini tab is going to generate certain combination of experiments. So now let's see.
so this is the output window and this is the sessions window where you will be getting the inputs now let's see minitab has generated totally 16 experimental runs and these total combinations you have to take in the lab and then you have to mention the responses here so in my case i will be mentioning uh, the required things as purity and two impurities this is a related substance once and this is a related substance two so total two related substances and purity i have taken so first of all i have to perform the experiment in lab and then i have to paste the results here okay so total 16 i got i'll do one thing i'll go with the half factorial instead of full factorial i'll go with the half factorial and i will select two center points so for that i'll be getting into toe factorial so just to complete this thing easier so i'll be selecting so already this is done and in this design i'll be going with half factorial and i'll take the center points per block as i'll do two center points click on ok so now minitab has generated total 10 experiments so i have selected half factorial that means 2 power 4 minus 1 2 levels to the power 4 and i want to reduce the experimental runs so i'll be selecting only half factorial so i have taken 1 so 2 power 4 minus 1 equals to 8 but i have taken two center points so 8 plus 2 it's going to be 10 so here i'll mention uh, this is purity and this is the related substance one and this is the related substance two and now i have to uh, understand what is or i have to give the responses here so the first one is 8 1.3.5 and 75 so i'll take approx uh, let's say 93.07 and then it's 0 0.67 and then it's 0 0.08 so these are only the considering values and i am not going to con take these values from anywhere so similarly if you want to perform these experiments you have to take this exactly from the experimental procedure where we are going to perform this and the next one is one one sorry eight one point three point two eight one point three point two and forty five and i'll take it as ninety six Point 0.2 and point 0.51 and point not 0.09 if you are not considering these values reasonably automatically the interpretation of the results are going to be difficult so i am taking my time just to consider the values and here it is 6 1.5 and 0 0.60 that means this is a center points so these two are going to be the center points so I will be taking the center values as 94.78.64 and 0.14 and this is the center, second center value center point that is so I will be taking with the limited amount of variance so it is 94.9 and 0.66 and this is let's say 0.1 and the next one is 41.575 so i'll take it as uh, let's say 89.5 and then 1.35 and then 0.13 and the next is 41.2 and 45 and i'll take this as 94.82 Point eight four, and then point seven four, and then next one is four one point two seven five. So four one point two and seventy five. So I can take test ninety one point mm, okay. I'll take this as around ninety two and one point zero eight and then point one one 
and then 4 1.3 0.5 and 45 4 1.3 equivalent and um, base equivalence is 0.5 and then 45 so let's say this is 90 and 1.2 90 1.2 and 0.08 and next one is 4 1.3 0.2 and 75 so this is let's say 91.87 and this is 0.9 and it is 0.1 and the final interaction is 8 1 0.5 and 45 so let's say this is 95.65 and then it is 0 0.7 and then it is 0 0.36 so now I have given the responses to these experiments so what I am going to do is I will go into this stat to analyze this factorial design so for that get into stat DOE factorial and in this analyze factorial design so I'll just click on this so I am going to select all these inputs I mean the responses click on select and then in this results so just click on what exactly you want so I want to have only the ANOVA model summary and the regression equation so remaining things I don't want so I'll be clicking OK and now click OK now you'll be getting three more things here for purity related substance 1 and related substance 2 so initially get into purity so now let's check this model summary so in this model summary so this means this model summary is going to help you to understand what is the fitment of this particular experimental design with respect to the process okay so in this model summary you can see total three things here s is nothing but a standard deviation so this is nothing but in simple words this will help you to understand how far the data values fall from a fitted values that means the standard deviation and the next one is going to be the r square so r square is going to be the percentage of variation in the response that is explained by the model okay so this is going to be 1 minus the ratio of the error sum of squares so what is the error that is available and to its square and the r square adjacent so the r square adjacent is going to be the percentage of variations in this particular response that is explained by a model and this is going to be 1 minus the ratio of mean square errors and finally here you got the r square predicted so this is going to be something different why because this is equivalent to the systematically like whenever you are going to remove certain observations from the data set automatically this is going to be varied so sometimes this is this can produce the negative values also and now we need to understand what is the acceptable values for this model summary especially there is r square and r square adjacent so you can consider any model which is having an r square and r square adjacent above 70 percent as considerable like here you have 99.99 and 99.87 that means this model is a correct fitted like uh, the fitment is great for this model and coming to this analysis of variation variance so in this particular analysis of variance so you want to observe the p values so minitab is going to perform any type of analysis with 95 percent confidence level and the remaining thing is going to be 0.5 percent or 5 percent so this 5 percent is going to be containing certain errors and any value which is less than that of 0.05 is going to be having an impact on a outcome or the output responses 
so here if you are able to see the solvent volume so it is going to be 0.014 and the next one is the base equilibrium it is going to be 0.023 and the next one is going to be temperature 0.015 so these three things are going to be less than 0.05 so that means so these three parameters are going to have an impact on the response that is the purity and coming to the two-way interactions that means where two parameters are going to have and two parameters interaction has been studied and here in this case the solvent volume and the reagent equals the value is less than 0.05 and similarly so solvent volume and the base quantity so the p-value less than 0.05 and here the solvent volume temperature so it is also less than 0.05 that means these are the significant factors and here you got a regression equation so if you want to ever calculate the purity by considering the solvent volume and the reagent equivalence and the base equivalence so you can use the equation to predict the output okay and the next one is the Pareto chart. So here in this particular Pareto chart, if you are able to see, so this is the line of significance you can say. And any parameter or any combination of parameters which are going to cross this line of significance is said to have an impact on the output. So for purity, so A, D, A, B, C, A, C, D and A. So all these have crossed the significance line. So that means so these things are going to have an impact on a, the final response that is nothing but a purity here in this case. So this is how we have to interpret the outcome and coming to the related substance one. So just click on this and even here also if you are able to see the standard deviation is less while in the case of purity the standard deviation is going to be approx 8%. Here in this case it is going to be approx 1.4%. And also see here the R square value and the R square adjacent is greater than 99%. So you can say the model fitment is great. And let's come into this analysis of variance. In this case, let's consider these p values again. So I think all these values are going to be less than 0.05, except the solvent volume and the temperature interaction. Remaining all values are less than 0.05. This means so all these parameters or the factors that you have considered is going to have an impact on the outcome here you got a regression equation for predicting the related substance one content and here see now the Pareto chart so almost all the parameters has crossed and the interactions has crossed that means almost all the parameters are having an impact except this combination of a and d that means solvent volume and the temperature and let's come to this regression equation I mean sorry the related substance 2 so here if you are able to see the standard deviation is approx 2.8 percent and the R square value is 99.8 and the adjacent is 98.17 so the model can be fitted so you can depend on this particular model and coming to this analysis of variance so so I think all the values are greater than 0 0.05 that means no values or the no factors are having an impact and let's come back to the predicted equation so this is the regression equation similar to the srs1 and pot and you can use this particular equation to predict and see here this Pareto chart so all the factors or the interactions are going to be less than that of the level of significance so that means no factors or inter or interactions having an impact on the related substance too and now get into stat like the initial interpretation is done and if you want to plot any other graphs between the responses and the factors so get into DOE the factorial and here you can use this predict that means you can give the required solvent volumes reagent basic lens and the temperature you can give certain values here and you can click on ok so that it is going to show the prediction equation for this or the predicted value for this related substance too so i'm not going to do anything now and get into DOE factorial and the factorial plots so you can get multiple plots and this is the cube plot so here i have selected everything and click on ok 
so this is the cube plot for related substances too okay so i have total four factors solvent volume base equivalence reagent and the temperature so these values indicates the content of related substance too so from this cube plot you can understand how the related substance too is going to vary okay click on ok doe factorial and here these things are not getting highlighted and finally you have this response optimizer so just click on this and if you want to optimize as per your desire so i will do one thing here you got the responses here you got the goals and this for each and every response you have different values like if you don't want to optimize the related substance to select don't optimize and the next one is minimize if you want to minimize the rs2 the related substance to content click on minimize and if you want to uh, target certain value you can select target and in order to maximize the content of related substance you can select maximize so here in this case i'll be putting a target of 0.05 so i'll type this 0.05 and for related sub substance one and even this also i want to target and this i'll take as 0.1 and coming to purity i'll try to maximize it i'll select it maximize and now click on ok so this is the response optimizer okay so here the d indicates the desirability and here what i have done is i have targeted as 0.05 but it is going to show me a level of 0.09 and coming to the related substance one so i have targeted as 0.1 but it is showing me 0.51 and coming to purity i have given nine maximize so it is showing the maximum of 96 percent and desirability is one that is this is with 100 percent and this is with 67 percent and this is with 94.2 percent and the conditions are going to be eight volumes of solvent, 1.3 volumes of reagent, 0.2 volumes of basic equivalent and 45 degrees of temperature. But I am not okay with it. Why? Because I have given a target of 0.1 and it has given a result of 0.51. Let's get back to data and let's see what is the reason why they have deviated. So click on OK. So for related substance 1, there is a huge difference. okay so if you are able to see the reason is the value is going to vary between like the minimum value is 0.51 and the maximum value is 1.35 so as it is going to vary between 0.51 and 1.35 so minitab has given a desirability of almost 67 percent why because i want to minimize it to 0.1 percent but it is not within the scope or it is not within the experimental uh, objective so many types is not going to do that i'll do one thing i'll perform the same optimization so i'll get into stat factorial response optimizer and i'll put as minimize and if i am going to put as minimize automatically the purity is going to increase so i have given minimize for related substance one and two and maximize for purity now click on OK. Now let's see what Minitab has given. So now the desirability is 99%. So previously it is only 85.86%. Now the desirability is increased. So now get into this response optimization. Now see the value like uh, the value that I can get for related, related substance to is 0.09 percent and for related substance one is the minimum is 0.51 from the experimental approach that we have done and coming to the purity the maximum that i have identified is 96.2 with a desirability of one percent sorry 100 percent and the optimum conditions are going to be so eight volumes of solvent 1.3 volumes of equivalence i mean the reagent equivalence and 0.2 uh, 
moleculars of waste and 45 degrees of temperature and if you want to vary these things and study the outcome so you can just track these things so if you want to reduce or if you want to change this so automatically the other values are going to change accordingly so again i'm going to put it to the full but the purity has varied so i think we can correct and this temperature also i have to reduce so this is how you want to perform the DOE using the design of experiments so once everything is done you have to take and control experiment to understand whether these parameters are going to give us the right values or not okay so you can download and install this trial version of Minitab from their official site and if you have any questions in this particular case so you can directly contact me on pharma kelsey 823 at the gmail.com and for better understanding of yours i'll be copying the values that i have considered into the excel and i'll be adding this downloading for this particular excel in the description link of the video so if you want you can download and you can practice it so thanks for watching our video and if you like our content please like and subscribe and also you can share it with your dear ones thanks